Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us start with typhoid. Let us start with typhoid. So let us first look at the pathogen which causes typhoid and the pathogen is a bacteria called Salmonella typhi and that is why it got the name typhoid from this typhi. So Salmonella typhi is the bacteria which causes typhoid. Now as I discussed before also typhoid is an infectious disease so it can be transmitted from one person to another person. So here, who helps in transmitting the disease? So human acts as carriers and they spread it to others. So how the pathogens enter inside the human body? So it can enter through contaminated food or water. So that is why it is often told that you should always wash the vegetables and the fruits before you consume them. Even when you prepare them, you should, uh, should not leave them open so that some microorganisms or insects do not fall on it so you should keep it clean in a proper hygiene so because this it is through this food and water the bacteria can enter inside your body and this bacteria can survive for weeks in water so it keeping stagnant water is an absolute no-no because when you have water staying in one place for a very long time there are chances that bacteria might develop in that water so now what happens once the bacteria goes inside the body either through food or water so primarily the bacteria reaches the small intestine now the food is taken through mouth and from mouth it passes through the alimentary canal then to the stomach and from the stomach it reaches the small intestine so it primarily attacks the small intestine but from small intestine, I mean, through the bloodstream, it can reach to any other part of the body because blood connects all the different parts of body. So it can actually invade other organs as well, like gallbladder or uh, liver or intestinal tract. So all of them can also be infected with the bacteria. Now, what are the symptoms when somebody is suffering from typhoid? Now, some of the very common symptoms are high fever, headache, weakness, stomachache, constipation and loss of appetite. So, these are some of the very common symptoms. Now, symptoms, just now we discussed, right? Symptoms mean some of the things which, uh, which do not happen to a person normally. So they might indicate a disease, but they do not confirm that the disease is there. So if somebody is having all of these symptoms, now there are high chances that the person might be suffering from typhoid, but you cannot be very sure that yes, the person is suffering from typhoid. So how do you become sure about it? So for that, the disease needs to be diagnosed and for that several tests are performed. So normally blood culture test or urine culture test. In fact, there is another test called Weedle test. These tests can actually uh, tell you if signs of uh, typhoid exists in that person or not. What happens is that once the bacteria has entered inside your body, so the bacteria is there in the small intestine and then it spreads to other parts as well. Now, when you pass on your stools, so the stools samples will also have that bacteria. Again, since the bacteria will uh, move to different parts of the body through the blood, so your blood sample will also have that bacteria. So your blood test or urine test will actually tell you the presence of this particular bacteria. And if this bacteria is present in your blood and uh, stool or uh, your urine culture, because everything is coming from inside your body. So if that bacteria is there, it will be coming out in those samples as well. And if it is there and you have these symptoms, so that confirms that somebody is suffering from uh, typhoid. Now once it has been diagnosed then how is it treated? It can be treated with a course of antibiotic medication. Now antibiotics are extremely effective against bacteria because antibiotic can kill the bacteria. Now if it is not very severe, if, if the amount of bacteria present inside the body of that person or the symptoms are not very severe, then the antibiotics are given for around 7 to 14 days. And it has been observed that as soon as the antibiotics are taken, the condition starts to improve within two to three days. Now, however, if the condition is very severe, then the antibiotics might be given for a longer period of time. Or in fact, in that case, sometimes the patient might be taken to the hospital and kept there for more care. 
Now, sometimes it has been seen that uh, the attack of typhoid recurs. That is, the, it gets cured with a course of antibiotic, but very soon it comes back. That is, very soon some of the bacteria comes back, and that is often known as relapse or a recurrence of the uh, disease. But whenever it relapses the symptoms are milder than the original one and then it can be easily taken care by a milder dose of antibiotics now some of the common uh, things which need to be taken care of when uh, somebody is undergoing a treatment for typhoid not only typhoid but uh, any other infectious diseases is that proper hygiene needs to be maintained personal hygiene as well as hygiene related to proper sanitation and proper drinking water proper diet so although the cleanliness had to be maintained in all aspects because all these infectious diseases involve some causal pathogens they are microorganisms and those microorganisms tend to uh, survive in uh, untidiness so cleanliness is a must for any of these infectious di diseases both for prevention as well as for treatment so that was about typhoid thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test thank you once again